let me pass this morning every hindrance let me pass this morning in my business in my children in my family in this church in every somebody that is praying this morning Mazupa rojata la kuze mayan talapala rozu ke talika apalanto rakunje leke paroske palo rakuja tala kronto oparaski mande zupra antuja taido oski mande ruze kaido okapale kratuja rakuse mantala karuza mande rekete leke tushka pala kataya rakata la katuska mantala kataya rakata la kataka la kapala katuska taya let me pass this morning any obstacle let me pass any hindrance let me pass any distraction let me pass anything that is tending to hinder my life let me pass in paruso le capra caduja rata la catala paruske mante e paruske manta le cataya shakata la paracata la cataya la carusca manta le ca aparuske ta jebre ketuske manta le cata we thank you father god as we are passing this morning as we are passing this morning, we thank you. Mazuka tala parushka tala parakataya. Le krozuta manto leka ambro oskomande. Rakata la paroketa la kata parakataya. Rekete leke tushka pala karuske mante. Let me pass this morning. Let me pass. Zupra kaduska pala kuje. Rakunta pali kro ota suke prakataya. Let me pass the confinement of the enemy. Let me pass the hindrances of the enemy. Let me pass, oh my God. Zukaya la parushka tala. E prozoko topa la karuja. E manta le pasuka pronte kale Oh, we thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray somebody. In Jesus' name we pray somebody. At this moment, I would like to call the woman of God, Minister Amelia, to continue with the prayers. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate her as she's coming to the podium. Somebody, ah, uh, is that what you can do? Let's celebrate her as she's coming to the podium. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have come to the house of the Lord to praise and worship. Amen. To Amen. bless him, O oh God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading from the book of Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, which says, Do not fear or be in dread of them. For the Lord your God who goes with you, he will not leave you or forsake you. Amen. 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 But do not fear or be do not fear or in th be in dread of them. That's what Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says. Do not fear or be in dread of them. Amen. Amen. For the Lord your God who goes with you, he will not leave you or forsake you. It has been said in the word that we should not dread them or fear them. For God who is with us always is with us. He will not forsake us. He will not leave us. He has said it in his word. We need to believe it, that we should not be afraid or fear things of the world or fear things that come to us. Amen. For God is with us, and he, if he is with us, who can be against us? Amen. Oh, Amen. He is a God who is faithful. He is a God who is true. He is faithful to his word through his promises and everything. Amen. Amen. So we should not fear we should not be even moved. We should stay on his word and know that we are anchored by a God who is faithful through the ages. A God who does not sleep or slumber. Amen. A God who came that we might have life in abundance. We will speak life in abundance upon our lives, O oh God. Your delay does not mean God has forsaken you. Amen. God is working everything out for your good. Amen. For we serve a God who lives. I don't know about your God, but I know my God who is faithful. Amen. For that we shall praise him and say, God, we shall not fear or be afraid for because we know that you will never forsake us. You have never left us. Amen. Let us begin to pray. Amen. 
Oh, Father God, we have just read from the book of Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, O oh God, that says, Do not fear or be in dread of them. For you, O oh God, go with us, O oh God, and you will never leave, O oh God, and forsake us, O oh God. Father, your word has said it, Mudimo Matam. We believe it, O oh God, in our hearts, O oh God. We believe it in our souls, Mudimo Matam, that you shall never forsake us, O oh God, that you are walking every path with us, O oh God that you knew us before we were born Mudimo Matlam we will not fear Jehovah for we trust Mudimo Matlam that you are silencing the storm oh God we shall not fear Mudimo Matlam when we enter the storm Mudimo Matlam for we know that you are taking us through the storm Mudimo Matlam because our enemies cannot swim oh God we thank you Holy Spirit we thank you Holy God that your word says oh God we shall not fear or dread O oh God, we shall not fear or dread Mudimo Matla, for you are with us, O oh God. Thank you, Holy Ghost, that you are with us, Mudimo Matla. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh, that you are with us, O oh God. Thank you, Elohim, that you are with us, O oh God. We thank you, Mudimo Matla, for your word has said it, O oh God. We shall not fear Mudimo Matla. We shall proclaim your promises, O oh God. We shall speak of your goodness, O oh God. We shall speak of your mercy, O oh God. We shall speak of your love, O oh God. We shall speak, O oh God, of your works, O oh God. We shall speak of your wonders, Mudimo Matlam. We shall not fear Mudimo Matlam. We will not be moved by our temporary situations, O oh God, for we are anchored in you, Mudimo Matlam. For we serve a God who is faithful through the ages, O oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, we shall not fear Mudimo Matlam. We will walk with you, O oh God. You walk with us, Mudimo Matlam. We shall not fear, Holy Ghost. We shall not fear, Mudimo Matlam. We shall not fear, Jehovah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, for you walk with us, O oh God. You will never forsake us, O oh God. You will never forsake us, O oh God. You came, O oh God, that we might have life in abundance, Mudimo Matlam. We shall not fear, Mudimo Matlam. We shall not fear, O oh Oh God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, we shall not fear, O oh God, for you are with us, Mudimo Matam. We shall proclaim you, O oh God. We shall call upon your name, Mudimo Matam, a name that is above all other names, O oh God. We shall call upon the king's name, O oh God, the king of kings, O oh God, the prince of peace, O oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, we trust in you, Jehovah. We trust in you. Oh God, we trust in you, Mudimo Matlam. Somebody begin to pray to God and proclaim it and say, We shall not fear, we shall not fear, we shall not fear, for we serve a God who is faithful. I have seen you work wonders in my life, oh God. I have seen you work wonders in my children's life, oh God. I have seen you work wonders in my family's life, oh God. I know no other God, Holy Spirit. I shall rest upon you, Mudimo Matlam. I shall call upon your name, O oh God. I shall say only you, Jehovah, only you, Daddy. I shall not fear Holy Spirit, for I know, Mudimo Matlam, that you are working it out for my good, O oh God. That you are working everything out for our good, Mudimo Matlam. We shall not fear, O oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word, Jehovah, has confirmed it, Mudimo Matlam. Whenever Everything else is silent, Mudimo Matlam. We shall go back to your word and say, You have written it, O oh God. You have said it, O oh God. May it be embedded in our hearts, O oh God. May it be embedded in our souls, O oh God. That we shall not fear Mudimo Matlam, for you will never forsake us, O oh God. We shall not fear Holy Spirit, for you will never forsake us, O oh God. That you are doing it for us, O oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, we say, depression will bow Mudimo Matlam. Sickness will bow Holy Spirit. Poverty will bow Jehovah for thou art with us O oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven I don't know about your God but I know my God came that I might have life in abundance. I speak abundance in every area of my life O oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven
Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Elohim, that your word has declared it, O oh God. We believe in you, Jehovah. We trust in you, Mudimo Matam. We put you first in everything, O oh God. We put you first in everything, Jehovah. We put our family in you, Jehovah. We put our lives in you, Jehovah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, O oh Father God, we thank you, O oh God, that fear, O oh God, is not our portion. We walk with the Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. We will wait upon you, we will wait in the name of Jehovah. We will be still and know that you are God, Mudimo Matam. All victory belongs to you, Jehovah. The battle is not ours, O God. The battle belongs to you, O God. I need somebody to stand and fight for their destiny and say, God, you shall not leave us, O God. You will not forsake us, Mudimo Matam. You will not forsake us, Rock of Ages. You will not forsake us, in our old times, O God. You will not forsake us. in the name of Jesus, Meson de Cataya, Icabascaton de Cascatalaba, Atoko Tacapala Cataya, Iando Catamanaca, Ilegetuas etum Pala, O Yacatapayata, Eketobas Catan de Cataya, Yatoko Scatan de Catalaba, Icatopaya Catonaba, Manto Scatalaba Cata, Ilacatumana Cataya, every head of God. we thank you, my Father. We bless your name, my God. In the name of Jesus, Maso Pato Pata, Rata do de Kapababua Tando Kai, Apam Bendo Skataya, Ibrendo Katapili to Kasta, Aprika Tabala Katapia Tumbada, Ibana to Kataya, Alendo Katamalata, Ilabada Bayagada Bayata, Ate Katambalata, Ratele Kaskata, Lando Katamanas Ebenetia, Ilando Katamana, Pito Kataya, Abatosko Pandekaya, Emando Katam Benes Ataya, Rabeli Katumana Katabala, Imando Katam Beleka 
kata la rote de kata ya ila marande kata mana de kai ili vika tuma na gabala cha ya gabala cha na mata ya ire de 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 ya cha ire de de beli kuto mana amando kata mana gabali sa via tuma bala cha ila mana kata mana gadiya sa ya ili mene kababa sa de ili mana kata ya ika tuma gabaya cha ito kupas kita mbele mando kata mbele cha ila de 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 we thank you Lord we bless your name in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus mighty father we are glad that mighty father this morning we are saying Lord we know mighty God that we shall not fear 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost we shall not fear we know you are on our side the Bible says if God be on our side who can be against us the Bible declares nothing can separate us from the love of God in the name and the blood of Jesus we cannot be separated we cannot fear because we know David declares though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art is with me I will fear no evil for the Lord is with me by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name and the blood of Jesus Marcos Catalabala Tacaba, the Rose Atamala, David says, The Lord is my shield and my buckler. Whom shall I fear? In the name of Jesus, David declares, The Lord is my shield and my buckler. Whom shall I fear? I cannot fear. I cannot fear. For the Bible says, The Lord, for we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. In the name in the blood of Jesus. We cannot fear. We cannot fear. We shall not fear. Fear. You are not allowed. You cannot prevail. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Oh, Shaparos Katandekaya. Manto Tekapaya. I cannot fear. I cannot fear. I cannot fear. I cannot fear. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Ikapanakataya. Lavarus Atomanaga. Ebele Katamanagada. I cannot fear. I shall not fear. I cannot fear. I shall not fear. In the name of Jesus. In La Toka Sapaya. Akona Manakota La Baskataya. Evele Kapara de Kataya. Manto Kaskataya. Manto La Balata. I speak to fear. I speak to fear. I command you. You have no hold. You have no power over our lives, over our destinies. In the name and the blood of Jesus, fear, I rebuke you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Kataya, Elijah, Elisha said to Kaz, fear not, Kaz, for those that are with us are more than those that are in the world. In the name and the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, fear not theirs, for those that are with us are more than those that are in the world, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name and the blood of Jesus, in the name and the blood of Jesus, in the name and the blood of Jesus, Sando Kataya. Oh, Father, you are God. Father, you are God. Father, you are God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the Lord. My God, my God, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we shall trust in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and those that run to him shall be saved. In the name of Jesus. 
we in thank the name you, of Jesus for the name of the you Lord is a strong tower and oh those God. that run to we him shall be saved by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost we thank you oh God that you are leveling the everything shall bow at the mention of your name oh God everything shall bow at the mention of your name oh God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven we thank you Jehovah in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven Amen Amen, Amen. I'd like to call upon the apostle of the house Amen, Amen. Can we please welcome him with a warm Amen, Amen. Praise God Hallelujah Amen. Hallelujah Amen. Celebrate God, somebody, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Do, not fear. do not fear. Neighbor, neighbor. Do, not fear. do not fear. You know, sometimes when you are told do not fear, it's not as easy as you are being told. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I, I believe that word do not fear speaks more than just being told do not fear. That word do not fear means trust in the Lord. When you are told not to fear, it means things that can make you to be afraid are present. But you are being given a charge that despite seeing things that can make you to be afraid, get to a place where you trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. We are living in, the, we are living in a world where fearful things are happening. Strange things are happening. On every side, when you look at your faith as a child of God, there are things every day that when you look at the way things are happening, you'll be afraid. You look at your bank account. <laughs> you are looking at yourself and saying, will my children's children survive with this kind of bank account? Hallelujah. But the Bible says, don't fear. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust in the Lord. You know, I love it when David says, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we shall trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. Meaning, there are many things that you can have options to trust in. But when and when you look at the things that David pointed out to say, some trust in, it's tangible things. Amen. But imagine you are being told to trust in something that is not tangible. The name that you cannot see. The name that you cannot touch. Because most of the times we have assurance of things that we see. The reason why you will be so confident that I will be fine by month end is because your bank account is showing that you will be fine. But what happens when you look at your bank account <laughs> and your bank account is saying insufficient? Will you be able to quote a scripture that says my God shall supply all your needs? Praise God. Somebody say I will trust in the Lord. Somebody say I will trust in the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. There is there is a there is a song that believers have been singing for years that says we serve a miracle waking God. We serve a miracle waking God. We save a wonder, we save a miracle, we save a miracle, waking God. We save a miracle, waking God. We save a miracle, waking God. We save a wonder, we save a miracle, we save a miracle, waking God. 
There is something that the Holy Spirit taught me during the week. That in the olden days, not everyone had the privilege of having a Bible. So not everyone would be having scrolls because right now you can walk with a Bible like this. Whereas in this version of technology, someone has a phone. Everything is in there. But in those days, they had scrolls. So you could not walk around with a what? With a scroll. Because it means it will be piles and so only the priests would teach the scrolls and the scrolls would stay in the church. So imagine before a service is about to start, someone would enter into the storeroom and <laughs> come with a <laughs> with a with a box or a trunk of scrolls and the priest would pick am I speaking from Isaiah and Jeremiah so someone would be there opening the whole scroll like this looking looking for the scripture if if the five books of the Bible cover these pages imagine they would look and begin to search for the scripture from there so they devised a way for people to have scripture in them that is why now they came up with songs so the songs they were singing in those days, they had scripture. Amen. So that believers, wherever they are, because you never school, the songs would remind you of the scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the scriptures would be like that, that they would have scripture. If it is Psalms 23, it would become a song. So wherever you are walking, it's now a psalm reminding you of what the word says. So it, you know, the Holy Spirit has shown me the power, the power of worship. Amen. The power of worship. That worship is not just the way, it's not just the sound, the melody. But from where it originated, it was scripture. So it would be both worshiping God and a prayer. All those how can I say it? All those scriptures that people caught from David, those were not songs. Those were not scriptures that we are praying with them. Psalms 91, he who abides under the secret place, it was a psalm. I, I, I don't know if someone is catching it. It was a psalm. So there would be a melody and scriptures being spoken. So it's actually a prayer. So that's why when you get to a place where the enemy puts you in a certain place, lift up yourself in a psalm and a hymn. Amen. It's not just worship, it's a prayer. Amen. And God hears. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say, do not fear. Okay. Hallelujah. Sit down if you can. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. My God. Greet your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you look awesome. And you look wonderful. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So today I'm going to be speaking about the three battles of a believer. The three battles of a believer. It will come from a place that I believe you know and understand. The three, three battles of a believer. Amen. Praise God. The three battles of a believer. Let me look for the one that is doing here. I left mine. Eh? The three battles. Three battles of a believer. Do you know the biggest challenge of believers? is unbelief. The biggest challenge of believers is unbelief. Being able to get to a place where believe in what, believing in what God says. Amen. Because most of the times scripture is spoken every day. We hear scripture being said. But getting to a place where you believe 
that which is spoken by scripture can become a challenge to a lot of people. Praise God. Praise God. That you are you are looking at the that prayer point that was lifted, let me pass. You are looking at the Red Sea. <laughs> and behind you the Israelites, the, the Egyptians are coming, and you know the moment they catch us, we are fried meat. So you, you are sandwiched like a like like, like a poloni in between <laughs> a sandwich. In front of you there is a river. A, 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 not a river, a sea. Behind you there is an army. Not just an army, a vicious army. And you don't have weapons. All you have in you is a prophet who is telling you, God says, let's go. <laughs> Let us go to Canaan. Ah! The only thing you have is a prophet. That you do not even know if what he is telling you God told him. <laughs> you don't even know it. Did God really tell him what he's telling you? Oh, he just felt. And everyone followed. So they are there and God, when he's looking and everyone is crying. And even people are saying, Moses, did you take us from Egypt to die here? And you hear Moses say, do not worry. The Lord says, these Egyptians you see, you shall see them no more. <laughs> My brother. <laughs> what are you saying? We shall see them no more. How? And the Bible says, he said, them, walk into the sea. Imagine being told, walk into the sea. Do you, have you ever seen a sea? You've ever stood in front of a sea or you just saw it in a movie? Yeah, it's possible. Because you can live even in a country where you've never been to any holiday resort in that country. So, it's very possible. When you look at a sea and at the end of the sea, it is still water while you are looking. And you are being told, walk into the sea. That kind of faith. Walk into the sea. And you do not even know this guy, maybe because he once killed an Egyptian. So he will not allow himself to be caught because he's on a suicide mission. So all of us, let's join him. <laughs> maybe he wants to drown himself. It happened. You know, when Jesus, when Jesus was going to pray for Lazarus, in that very same place, they were stoned. They wanted to kill him in that place of Bethan. And they ran. Huh? God made Jesus to disappear, to, to just hide. By the time he's telling the disciples, we are going to Bethany, ah, one of the disciples says, let us go and die with him. Because <laughs> they did not know. We just were stoned in that place and you want to take us there. So sometimes believing God can be, that's why the Bible says, the Bible declares that for the things of God are foolishness to them that are perishing. To believe God, it takes courage. It takes courage. Praise God. Praise God. If you have ever read the book of, the book of Hebrews, Chapter number 11. Many people call, call Hebrews the what? The whole of faith. Is that what you call it? Hebrews chapter number 11. Many people call it the whole of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance of things hoped for. Substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So there are two things that are spoken here that one has to break down. There is substance of things hoped for. 
there is evidence of things not seen. Substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not yet seen. That is what faith is. And throughout the Bible it has been revealed. Throughout the Bible we have seen God revealing this revelation. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So let's paint the picture. So you need substance of the things you are hoping for. Alright? Hebrews what? 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Alright? So number one, substance. Of things hoped for. Number two, evidence of things not seen. Now, you have to also look or underline in your Bible where it says things. Because most, most prayer points what people are praying is on the word things. <laughs> when, when we grew up, there is a, I don't, I don't know what you call them. You know, this generation is now different. They, they now eat, Z, they call them Zimbas. When we grew up, there were things that were called things. There were chips. That, <laughs> there were chips that were called things that even as we grew up, everything that is a chip, chips we call, I, I want things. <laughs> You love things. <laughs> Praise God. So, things is everything. It, it combines in anything tangible. Anything phys physical that anyone can pray for is categorized in the word things. Am I communicating to somebody? So, the Bible says faith is the substance. What is a substance? What is a substance? <laughs> huh? <laughs> All right. This is made up of two words, right? When you divide the word substance, there are two words that are there. There is sub and what? What? What is a stance? Something stationary. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, a stance is something stationary. So, when there is a substance of things hoped for, when you are hoping for something, you can never hope for something that you do not know. When a person is saying, I'm hoping to get a job, Praise God. It's either you were told or promised about it. So the promise becomes your substance, something you hold on to. If you are promised and someone tells you that they are going to do something, that word you were told or promised becomes what you hold on to. It becomes a substance of things hoped for. Do you have a substance? We have it. The Bible says we have, a sh we have a more sure word of prophecy that is the word of God. Do you know that most of the times people do not understand that people that are filled with the word of God. No matter, hear me, there is a scripture that I read in the book of Proverbs. Do you know what the Bible says? If a man's ways are pleasing before God he will make his enemies to be at peace with him do you know what that means no it's, it's a very very powerful scripture an enemy is someone who does not like you the bible says when your ways are pleasing with God he God will visit your enemy 
I do not know how he touches that person's heart. But that person will wake up just being at peace with you. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. May that scripture become a reality in your life. So you get into that scripture. No matter, even if you get angry with me, you just like me. <laughs> because I will take that scripture into prayer. You promised me I have the substance of what I'm hoping for. I don't want to fight with this person. So you just wake up feeling liking me. God has visited you. There are many people that have contradicted with the Bible. Certain people telling you, oh, he leave it to God. God cannot touch people. Hey, even the Bible says, and God will turn the heart of the sons to the fathers. He is capable. He is capable going to touch the heart and people are surprised. Believers are created by God to live a stressless life. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. Look at Jonathan. I'm created to live a stressless life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a scripture that says, people say, do not what? Do not, uh, something say, do not uh, stress me for I carry the, <laughs> the, the marks of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Say, so don't stress me. I carry the marks of God. <laughs> First Peter chapter number five. First Peter chapter number five. I will read from verse six. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. So it means there is humility, there is time, and there is exhortation. There is no way God will promise you something that he will not fulfill. Humble yourself. Amen. Humble yourself. I, I, I didn't say be like a, a, a bed that they've, you know, when, when it's raining or have you ever seen a cat after it rains? No, I didn't say be like that. You, you can still be humble and be bold. H humility is not a... If I, there is no word, better word. Humility is not stupidity. Amen. 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 So when the Bible says, humble yourself. Humble yourself. It means you are cool. You are humid. <laughs> Praise God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Hear me. No matter who tells you you are not humble, as long as you are humble before God, everyone else's expectation of humility does not matter. Because people, alright, this is what I think yesterday, this is what I wanted to speak on. People will gauge anything about you based on their experience. So that is why you must never get to a place where you always bank on human approval. Because when they measure your pride with their pride and they see that ah, I think my pride is better, they will say you are proud. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. When they measure your wealth and their wealth and they see you have more, they say you are rich. When you have little than them, they say you are poor. So it's people will measure and gauge you based on their experience. 
and what they've encountered. But God sees you from the inside. That is why even when Gideon is hiding, God says, thou mighty man of valor, even when he's hiding, because God sees you from the inside. It's okay. Praise God. God sees you from the inside. He sees you from the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Look at verse 7. Cast all your care unto him for he cares for you. Another version on that word casting all your care. It says cast all your worries unto him. Tell your neighbor throw it to God. What are you worried about? Throw it to God. They'll look at you and say but don't you stress me. Stress over what? Me. Stress. Hold me. Hold. Saved. Sanctified. Baptized. Holy Ghost fueled me. Ah, loved by God. Worry over what? So there are two things that we are being told. Let me put it down so that we understand. So we are reading from 1 Peter. Chapter number 5. Praise God. From verse number what? Six. Going forward. So they are, the first thing that we have been told is humble yourself. Humility is equal exaltation. Praise God. And the second thing we are being told there, the Bible says, cast all your worries unto God. So cast worries to God. You understand where we are going. So the Bible says cast all your worries to God. So while you are humbling yourself, the fact that you are able to take your problems and bring them to God, it's a sign of humility. Because pride will tell you Try to join up things. Try to. Do you know why many people are stressed in life? Because they are trying to use their strength and every avenue they know how to fix things is not working. So when every avenue you know how to fix things is not working, what happens? You, you are stuck. You are stuck. Every now and then, you must go and read Matthew 7. It will help you. The life that Jesus explains in Matthew 7, that is the life that God wants people to, to live on. And the Bible says, don't your father clothe the flowers. Do the birds plant or farm, but they eat and they're never hungry. And the question is asked, are birds more valuable than you before God? Ah, that question is very painful. I, I think even when God looks at people and sees how people stress in life. Have you ever seen that most of the things you stress about, you, have, you are not the one who fixed them? No, let's be honest. <laughs> you stress and to those that have weak bodies, you have uh, BP, blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but after stressing, at the end of the day, the most surprising thing that happens, that thing will be fixed without you doing anything. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Yes, most of the things you stressed about, you are not the one who fixed them. And you didn't even know when it was fixed. That's why you didn't even recognize that it was fixed. 
You just saw rent being paid. How you found the money, you don't know. Because the enemy wants to keep your mind busy. The, the biggest battle we are fighting on this world is the battle of the mind. Praise God. Amen. Because what is it that the devil wants to control? Okay, we are going there. We are going there. So cast all your worries for God cares for you. That word God cares for you, it's very deep. I don't just read scripture. I'm one person who does not just read the scripture. God cares for you. How, how, how are you feeling? I said God cares for you. You see, when you're in a relationship and you text and say, I care for you. Something like electricity. <laughs> hey! You feel like, hey! <laughs> You feel like singing for that person. Say, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you. <laughs> I can search for eternity, my love. Oh, <laughs> none. After you are told, I care for you. Do you know that people can live, can reject their family just being told I care for you? My mother, you don't, they can even tell say, you people in this house, you don't care for me. <laughs> I'm telling you, a person will tell their, their, their brother, their sister, their parents, you, you guys, you don't care for me. You don't, you don't care for me. Leave me alone. <laughs> you don't care for me. Praise God don't care for me. I care for you. That, that, that scripture, that scripture, it has to punch something in you. It says, I care for you. Mm. Having someone omnipowerful who cares for you. And when that reality sinks, when that reality sinks, why would you care for human approval? Why would you care for human approval? <laughs> if you like me, I like you too. If you don't like me, it is fine. You do not have the switch to the oxygen that I breathe. <laughs> See, I no longer love you. Ah, you are ugly compared to who? <laughs> Compared to who? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I pity those on that say uh, I pity someone who kiss you, yet they are living with people like you in their house. So he cares for you. Such, such scriptures are scriptures that when you sit down and you continuously repeat it, God cares for me. God cares for me. It does not matter the storm you are in. I always tell you, prayer is bringing back his word to him. Do you know what you do when you, you bring back God's word to him? Do you know what this is? This is his reputation. So when you bring it back to him, you are putting his reputation on the line. Ah, I call him the incomparable God. If you hear me pray, hey, incomparable God, incontestable God, Undefeated, the uncreated creator, ah, the one who means what he says and says what he means, 
the one who says, for I know the plans for you. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you and to give an expected end. Ah! You say it in the book of Numbers. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is established in heaven. Then you hear me say, you care for me. How, how can my life be like this when you care for me? It's impossible for him not to move. Because there's a difference. Let me teach you this. You see, there's a difference when we pray together. You saw what we were doing when we were praying together. We were charging each other. Right? Come here. Let me show you what happens when you are praying together. Come, come. Alright. So when you are praying together, when I, you, you do, you live from there, when I, you live to a time from there. When you are praying together, right? It is like logs of fire. Have you ever, have you ever seen, have you ever been on a fireplace when you put logs and you join them? What happens? So we Ikado Higa Ikado Higa Ikado Higa Ikado Higa Hada Hidakaya Hada Hidakaya Hada Hidakaya Itoa Hadaya Itoa Hagaya Hideka Hadia Kaduele Hadia Kaduele Hagia Kaduele Haga Heda Haga you, you you feel like we can go for two hours, ne? There is an energy that just comes like like oh. Right? Now, now, when they go to their homes, they are gone. I don't pray, Higado. Uh -uh. I'm now alone now with my father. So you won't hear me shouting. Because now I'm with him. There we were praying. We were encouraging each other. It's mass prayer. We were charging each other. That's why Paul says, do not neglect the gathering of the saints. Because sometimes, you know, even as a preacher, right? Sometimes you sometimes when people are now are, will be doing prayer, it charges me also. So what begins to happen is when we are praying together, we are charging each other. But when you are now alone, you don't pray shouting. You speak to your father. You speak to your father. Is it not that you said? Ah! Jesus, when he was at the tomb of Lazarus, he said, I know that you hear me always. But because of these ones that are gathering, so the reason he prayed was because those that are gathering, he wanted them to know that God sent him. But if it was not of these ones gathering, you would not have prayed the prayer. You would have just said, Lazarus, come forth. Because many people, what hinders them from having a relationship with God is the word prayer. So their communication with God becomes timed. Uh, already, we are dismantling something there. Eh? Their relationship with God become, becomes timed because there is a time that you have to go to pray. But if we remove that word, your relationship with God is every minute and every second. God, I love you. While you are seated, let's read the scripture that is coming down. So God cares for you. So he has told us that he will exalt us. He just wants us to humble ourselves, surrender. Amen. To humble is to surrender yourself. So the first thing is surrender. Number two, no, cast all your worries. Don't carry it. There are people that are carrying burdens. You, you are carrying it by yourself. Hear me. You, you can never carry the burdens of this life. You came, things were there. You will go, it will remain there. W one of the things that touched me, and I am getting to a place where I'm praying about it more. I have realized that there are people that live, grow, and die without enjoying their life. I'm telling you. I know people preach many other things, 
But it's something that I sat down, I started examining. How can we become ministers of the good news? Because good news, it means something good. Someone has to enjoy their life. There are people that will live, go to work. Some make money, some make reasonable money. But you'll be surprised that certain people, if you ask them, have they ever enjoyed their life? They have never. They wake up to survive and strive and thrive. They sleep and they don't even sleep. Imagine when you are sleeping, you are planning what you will do tomorrow. When you wake up tomorrow, you are busy. By the time you sleep again, there is no time of rest. Yet the Bible says, come all ye that are heavy burdened, and I will give you. Are you seeing that the assignment of Jesus is so that you don't carry burdens? So if Christ is preached, you have to reach a dimension or a place where you are not weighed down with burdens. You, you are not heavily laden with burdens. If you don't like me, it's fine. I can't force you to like me. <laughs> that is true. As a minister of God, the few years that God has helped me to be a minister of God, I've understood a lot of things. There are people that will hate you not because you did anything. And when are you might increase your blood pressure trying to investigate? I'm telling you, someone will just look at your hairstyle and say, oh, this one thinks they have money. Just, just, you, you went to the barber, you did your hairstyle, they can still do the same. <laughs> They can still do the same. Just look at you and say, ah, look, look. And they will hate you for that. And when you are now stressing, what did I do? You are now hyperventilating. <laughs> Enjoy your life. Leave them. Leave them. Some people are stressed. Why is my life? Things, you see, th there are certain teachings that I say, certain teachings are very dangerous. Because they put people under pressure. See, my life, men of God, I don't know what happens in my life. My life, sometimes things, things go up, things go down. What did you want them to do? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever seen a person, have you ever gone to the hospital? Or have you ever used that watch? that measures your heart rate or something. Have you ever seen it? You know, there's something that I learned there. I saw something like this. The moment you see it go like this, you are dead. <laughs> adventure. Because even your faith has to be tested. Eh? Mm. Uh -huh. But when you see it just going smooth like this, ah! go and cry. <laughs> Say, if you see someone breaking me, me, the devil does not fight me. I live a peaceful life. There are no challenges in my life. My sister, the devil hears you in hands. <laughs> he doesn't even fight me. If you see him not fighting you, you are on his camp. <laughs> That's the truth. Because if you are really on God's side, he will not like you. You won't. So you will stress in life and that's where your faith is tested. Do you really have faith in God? Do you really have faith in God? There is a man called Smith Ugusweth. No Smith Ugusweth. Come, let me show you. Come, let me show you. Smith Ugusweth was a man of faith. He was called the father of faith. Eh? Now, 
Let me just speak a brief story about him. He grew up in a family where everyone was a drunkard. So he was also... Then God met him around his 40 years. He's one man who God used when he was old. So he got married to a wife, and the wife was more intellectual than him. So the wife was the one who would read and even do much. Himself was now the man of action. Power. Ah. Now, come, let me show you what, what the man would do. Smith Ugusweth was deep. If you come and you have a toothache, and you're coming, men of God have a toothache, come. You would. <laughs> and after the clap, that tooth will be fine. You come with a bridged baby. <laughs> you, you, uh, no, you, did, you wouldn't feel it. it was <laughs> but I should do it on you. Maybe you won't feel it. <laughs> he was a man of faith. So, bam, people, would, ah, people would be scared. But after the blow, maybe God was speaking to him. You never know. People of God go speak to them. The bridged child would come back to its original state. Are you saying that God uses people? Mm -hmm. So, if you see me now doing it, don't be afraid. <laughs> now, one day, Smith Ugusweth was in his bedroom upstairs. And he heard sounds. And uh, the what? He heard sounds. There were sounds that were happening downstairs. He went down. Do you know what he saw? When he was on the balcony, he saw the devil. Do you know what he did? Hmm? He said, oh, it is you. He went back to sleep. <laughs> Do you know why? Do you know why? The devil loves attention. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's read scripture. Hallelujah. Are you there with me? All right. First Peter chapter number 5 verse 8. Peter 5 verse 8. Read it for me. Uh-huh. Be sober. Be what? Be what? Don't be. There are people that the moment a problem comes, the reason why the Bible says cast your worries unto him. Be sober. Look at you and say be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Do you know there are people that are drunk with problems? <laughs> the way they stress, the way they jump around like a monkey. Oh, what am I going to do now? Hear me. The Bible says be sober. You ever seen a, have you ever seen a sober person in a, maybe at a place where people are drinking? Yeah, you can identify that this one is sober. There is a certain calmness that will show you that, oh, uh, these ones are so, soft drinks. They are not <laughs> intoxicating drinks. While these other people are, are dancing, the sober one will be the one looking holier than thou. <laughs> so the Bible is saying be sober. Uh huh. And be, vigilant. be vigilant. You see, you, you, that's, that's a grammatical somersault that you just did right there. <laughs> uh huh. Be sober and be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, he does what? He rose like a lion walking about seeking whom he might devour. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. The God of all grace, who had called us unto his who 
called us to his internal glory by Christ. By Christ. Mm -hmm. After that he suffered for a while make you perfect establish strengthen and settle you. Somebody say God will settle me. Somebody said, God will settle me. You see, when you speak the word settle, you're already seeing dollars. <laughs> the Bible says, be sober and be vigilant. Be sober and be watchful. Be sober and both be standing. Let me word the word vigilant. Remove the word vigilant and say, be a vigilante. That's what you understand. You watch too many movies. So, you know, <laughs> a vigilante is that person who fights for justice even when they are outside justice. You see those superheroes of yours that are not law enforcement, but they'll be fighting for justice. Vigilant. So be sober and be vigilant. For the devil walketh about roaring like a lion, seeking someone to devour. Why is he roaring? I saw um, a certain video. There are sheep and there are wild goats. So in the mountains there are cliffs, right? There are cliffs. So what happens with lions and even some of these animals? What they do on these goats is because it's a cliff and these goats are able to walk on the cliff but remember it's a dangerous place because the stones go down one step you are gone so other lions they go on the bottom and the other lions will go and top and start roaring so this sheep or goat will try to run away from the lion roaring from the top and fall into the trap so when he is roaring about, roaring about and walking around, what is he looking for? Your reaction. Your reaction. And when you are found, you are not sober at all. He just roars once like this. You, you just feel a small pain on your leg. Oh... A small pain already you are saying, oh, a small pain on the leg. You are already telling us, I have gout. <laughs> a small pain on the side. Hey, I think it's a lung problem. Ah! And you are confessing it. You are confessing it. Oh, he has caught you because he's roaring like a lion looking for your reaction. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He's looking for your reaction. How are you going to react? Because he does not know you. Your capability, your power, the level of faith that you have. So he will roar. And when are your response? Okay. I always teach us. And this is one of the things that I want you to catch every day. The devil does not know what is in your mind. So this is how he brings it out. He does not know your level of faith. He does not know. Do you know what the Bible says? Hmm? The Bible says angels will learn about God. From who? From us. Yeah, you read your Bible. I like that. <laughs> Even angels are looking at you. But they do not know what is a relationship with God. I hear what I'm saying. They don't know what that is. Mysteries are not revealed to them. They are revealed to us. So they are always looking at you. And the devil just rose once. Once. Angels are looking. And the devil just rose. It's month end and his finances seems not to be fine. Already you are jumping and angels are saying, but there's a scripture that says my God shall supply. Ah, if believers jump like this. <laughs> the moment you jump, ah, the devil says, oh, uh, this one's faith. It's a, it's a, it's a pekinini faith. This one. P 
put this one on the side. Let's go for the next victim. So already the moment you the moment you react, do you know what that means? He now knows the buttons to press next time. Ah, he didn't catch it. So that's why many people you realize that it is only one thing that they are hit with. Because the way you react when that thing is done on you, the enemy already now has found a strategy to deal with you. He rose like a lion seeking someone to what? To devour. He is not a lion. The Bible says like a lion. So he brings, okay, that scripture shows you he brings illusions. Things that seem to be, but they are not. You think, oh, I'm drowning. My life is finished. My finances are done. My ministry, my marriage, my health is done. Yet you are still fine. You are still fine. And when by then you are starting to confess, the moment you are confessing, you are giving him legal right. And how he loves believers that are weaklings, that just jump around, that are not sober. You are. You <laughs> hey, you are not vigilant. You are just like a jumping frog. We are papas. You are everywhere. You are just jumping. One small pinch like this. Ah, I say, all right, it is well. We have found it. Have you ever seen there are people at school that when you are in the classroom and the teacher says, come here. People are being beaten. <laughs> Run the whole class. And someone will come and just do like this. Ah, you will see that teacher's face will change. Boom. Ah, that's what kind of a human being. <laughs> Even the teacher himself if you could, they would change and say, okay, let me bring a knife. <laughs> this one is not working. <laughs> because I'm trying to inflict pain so that you can be better. But it seems like pain is not entering. It, it frustrates. That is what frustrates the devil from people that are sober and vigilant. You know those people that says, ah, all things will work for the, together for the good. Do you know what that scripture means? Huh? Huh? What does it mean? All things. That's what? For the what? For the good. All right. Somebody say all things. All things. You say all things. all things. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? All things. Everything. All. Substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I have not seen it. But all things work together for the good. Amen. And many people, evidence of things not seen. Do you know what many people do? On the evidence of things not seen. Why are you stressing of being broke yet you are not yet there? Who told you that you have no money? You know, the Bible says, come and buy without money. There is an economy that does not need money. Money is an idea from human beings. There is an economy where someone will look at you, like you, and give you. <laughs> it's an economy. Have you ever wondered how certain people survive? even more years than people that seem as if they are. And you're wondering, how, how does God do it? You will never be stranded. It's impossible. Yeah. Loving God, have a sober mind, all things. So there are certain people, the evidence they have, it's a bad evidence. Very bad one. Very bad one. Oh, my life is going, is going to be tough. Already they are stressing. You are not yet in 2025. You are stressing. This, this message is about the future. We will kill you. This motivational speaking. <laughs> it is good to plan.
plan for the future. But they were, you are not told to stress about the future. Do you know even the Bible says men can plan, but it is God who has that decision. So even after you plan for the future, it is God who decides. So your plans are just to guide you and to discipline you. But know that God has more than what you are planning. Because unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, you can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. What is the power? It has to work within you. I've been around people that stress. They even get to a place where they stress about what will happen when I die. Are you dead? <laughs> yes, because already if you are thinking about death, the Bible says we speak at things that are not as though they are. It's already the enemy is pushing your mind. That you are already planning and thinking about death. You are bringing that thing closer. It is good to plan, but be sober. Do you know one of the people, one of the people that frustrated that devil, it was Jesus. You never knew what was in his mind. Even when he spoke, he would speak in parables. And that is the life that God wants believers to be. Praise God. Where you are full of knowledge. Demons, the, the, demons do not like people that do not give them attention. They don't. If right now we start doing those uh, everyday deliveries, ah, you'll be surprised. Demons will be coming out every day. Even people that did not have demons. <laughs> demons will find a way to enter. Because they're being given attention. I was in a service sometime. I was invited to a certain church. At the moment I held the mic. You know, when I hold the mic, the first thing is I will do worship. I can push worship 10 minutes if you are not. The whole service can be worship. The worship is to make sure that you test the spirit in the environment. Because you can get into the word and be preaching to a brick wall. So you need worship to soften. Eh? Eh? To romance. <laughs> so when people begin to worship, you know that his word can now enter. It's now, the, the ground is now fine. So the moment I'm doing worship, and in the middle of worship, prayer point rises. Ah, I'm now saying, let us get into the word. Ah, someone starts manifesting. Ah! Hey. And I know those demons that manifest the moment you are starting to preach. You won't preach. And the devil is very wise, and someone will think it's power, and the demon will come out and say, How did you see me? You are you have power. Ah, hey, the Bible says the devil is the father of lies. Don't be lied to that you are too powerful by a devil. So now you say, right now, come on. People are here because the word brings salvation. So the devil will now make you to focus on something else. You won't preach. I said, ah, oh yeah, check that person. Take that person. Go and pray for them in the room outside. Ah, the demon did not take two minutes. If you don't give it attention, it goes very fast. <laughs> but if I prayed for it in church, I'm telling you, it would have told history from grandmother. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. So, we will praise God. So we will continue from Matthew chapter number 4. Let me just point out something so that you understand what we'll be talking about. Praise God. Now on the disciples of on, on the temptation of Jesus, you realize that there are three things that happened when you read your Bible. Praise God. There are three things that happened when you read your Bible and I want you to study it when you are alone. Praise God. So Matthew 4. Matthew chapter number 4, verse 4. All right. 
So the Bible speaks of the three things that happened or the three temptations that happened. The Bible says Jesus was hungry and the devil said to him, change stones to what? Already he was what? Hungry. Already he was hungry. Already he was hungry. Ah, hunger is deep. Hunger. Desire. Do you know the Bible says you are tempted by your own lust? That's what the Bible says. Let every man know that they are tempted by their own lust. So if, if you are not lustful for that thing, even if it's brought, it won't tempt you. I'm not, I'm not justifying certain people. Some people can tempt you for you. <laughs> they can tempt you even to anger for sure. But <laughs> the Bible says you are tempted by your own lust. So the first thing that you have to understand that we'll touch on, the first thing that devil will come on, it is the situation you are in. You will try to manipulate or take advantage. Praise God. You try to manipulate or take advantage. Jesus was already hungry. And the devil changed, changed stones to bread. Number two. When you read your Bible, the Bible says that Jesus says to him, no man shall live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Praise God. Number two, the Bible says that, and the devil took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple. And the devil says, jump, God will save you. Jump, God will what? Save you. So the first thing it is, your provision. Number one. Number two, the first thing is, the word of the Lord will be challenged. That's the second battle of a believer. The word of the Lord will be what? Challenged. When are you know the Bible says God loves you and the hate you have around you will make you think twice. You know God says I will supply but there is a position you will reach where you even question that word. So the devil took Jesus up to the pinnacle of that temple. A temple was a church. Up there. Up, 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 up. High levels of the spirit. You know when you are in the high levels of the spirit. And you are tempted to power when you are on the high levels of the spirit. Many people have tempted God, ne? <laughs> have you ever tempted God? Say, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. The enemy will try to bring you to that position where the word of the Lord is challenged, or even you, you challenge the word of God. Say, ah, but God, you don't love me. God, you are not real. Ah, he says, I care for you. When now you are saying he does not love you, the devil will bring you to that position. That you can be in church, and even when the word is spoken, you are wondering. These things that are being said. Have you ever been to that level? Are they fiction or people just want to entertain us? That's the truth. That's the second battle of a believer. The third battle, the Bible says he took him to the highest levels and he showed him the kingdoms of the world. He says, bow before me. Bow before me. Do you know how people leave the house of God? Do you know how people backslide? You'll be given an option. You'll be given an option. Bow before me, I'll give you all these things. I'll give you all these things. When you are holding yourself, you're holding yourself. In the lecture, I'll say, ah, you want to pass. Instead of just reading and being in the cold and coming back with eyes with bags in the morning, just just sleep with me. I'll give you a a a a distinctions. Ah, you say long route, shortcut, shortcut is good. A shortcut will cut you short. <laughs> it will cut you short. Say, ah, you want to go abroad? Sleep with me. It is better to miss abroad than to miss above. 
So that, and that is the biggest temptation. I'm telling you. You can sell your destiny. The enemy, the enemy knows how to do it. You can sell away your freedom. The enemy knows how to, to go about it. Ah, you'll be history. Oh. You'll be history. Someone will just be sent around you with that assignment. And before you know it, you are gone. And many people go through this. Even those that are cold, everyone is cold anyway. You go through this. Bow before me. I'll give you all these things. You compromise. Someone is called by God. You are a true prophet of God, true apostle, true teacher. And you are busy. You are teaching Bible without dilution. And you realize, eh, if I don't teach certain messages... <laughs> so you divert say hey, if I don't prophesy but is God is it the right way of God because the moment you do that things can work but already the enemy has captured you he has captured you He has captured you. I pray may your path not be corrupted. Father, I pray in the name and the blood of Jesus. To everybody listening to me under the sound of my voice. I decree the grace and the anointing of God. I pray mighty God that you touch them. I pray mighty God that you lead them. I pray mighty God that on every desire they have. You will show yourself. You will reveal yourself in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and I declare by the power of the resurrected Christ in the name that is above every other name. The Bible says, cast your worries unto me for I care for you. Father, I pray that may you stretch forth your hand for your Bible declares that our lives is, are, are on, in your hands. Let your care be seen. Let your care be seen. Let your care be seen. In the name of Jesus, I come against storms I come against the winds, persecutions by the power of the resurrected Christ. Thank you, my Father, because you are God. Do what no man can do and take all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So God bless you. God be with you. In the name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. Look at your neighbor and say, you are blessed. You are blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, you are blessed.